the February edition of Beef Monthly, we're going to talk a little bit about it being cold outside in headline news. And Ask Dr. Ron, we're going to provide a discussion about when to provide calving assistance. We're also going to have the last segment of, of the shoot safety video. In production and management tips, we're going to talk about winter and early spring things to consider. In upcoming programs and events, we've got a new program called Forage Forum Fridays. Welcome to the February edition of Beef Monthly. I'm Dr. Ron Luminager, Beef Extension Specialist at Purdue University in the Department of Animal Sciences. And now, a word from our good friends at Corteva. Your land is more than a business. It's a heritage that has been passed down from those who tended it before you, by those who shaped it, changed it, and cared for it. Your land has a legacy, one that you carry on, but also one you build on. At Corteva AgriScience, we are the stewards of a lasting legacy. We have a responsibility to Dow AgroSciences to maintain the relationships and trust they built and to build upon those foundations. To help you care for your land, to provide innovations that help you protect the hard work and investment you've poured into it. To help you build a legacy that can be passed on for generations to come. Corteva AgriScience. In this month's headline news, we're not alone in the bitter cold, wind chills below zero, and snow going all the way up the center of the United States from Mississippi and Texas, up through the Corn Belt to the Canadian border and on towards New England. Livestock producers have been working nonstop to keep cattle fed, waterers working, and snow plowed. Fortunately, it looks like we're going to get some warmer weather this coming week. However, the warmer weather will bring in some rain, which will create a new set of challenges for beef producers in the way of mud. With frozen ground, melting snow, and rain, which can cause flooding in some areas, including our cow lots. Dry bedding in the form of straw, corn stalks, or old poor quality hay can make cows and calves much more comfortable and reduce the stress. This month's Ask Dr. Ron producer question is, how long do I wait before providing assistance to a cow that is calving? Well, let's first talk, talk about the three stages of parturition. Stage one is the preparatory stage, okay? It typically lasts from four to 24 hours, and we start to see a lot of hormonal and behavioral changes. This is when the cow will start to isolate maybe herself from the herd. She starts to get fidgety, okay? Laying down, standing up, maybe kicking at her side, okay, but just acting atypical at this point. The cervix will also dilate during this time and the ligaments around the tail head will start to relax. Stage two is considered the delivery stage of parturition, okay? That begins with the appearance of the water bag and is completed when the calf is delivered. Stage three is the cleaning stage. That's where the, the placenta is expelled and typically the cow will release the placenta in less than eight hours after she calves. If it's longer than 12 hours, we consider it a retained placenta. Do not remove retained placentas. Typically these cows will release it in 72 hours, maybe a little longer in some cases, but as long as the cow is healthy, looks healthy, continues to eat and drink, leave it alone, okay? The cow will ultimately release that as that uh, placenta starts to deteriorate and releases that the, the placenta from the uterine membrane. And if you have any questions, consult your veterinarian. If, particularly if the cow goes off feed, she starts running a fever, okay, and, uh, antibiotics and intervention probably will be necessary at that point, but typically that's not necessary. 
if we think about the average duration of stage two, okay, or that appearance of the water bag until the calf is delivered, the data would suggest that in mature cows, stage two lasts less than 30 minutes. In first calf heifers, it typically lasts less than an hour. Now, when do I provide assistance? In heifers that are making little to no progress after 60 minutes after the appearance of the water bag, and in cows, little or no progress after 30 minutes after the appearance of the water bag, probably need to go in and, and check to make sure that the calf is positioned normally, typically with the nose and the two front feet first, all right, and make sure that you've got all three pieces, right? Uh, if you have a malpresentation, then now's the time to get that corrected. If you're going to go in and you're going to check and you're going to provide assistance, make sure that you use a good disinfectant, all right? Be as clean as possible so that you don't bring in any foreign material into the vulva and uterus of that cow because that will set up the potential for a uterine infection and a delayed return to estrus after calving. If you're going to provide assistance, make sure that the cervix is fully dilated before you start to pull a calf and make sure that you hook the chains correctly. Notice in the right hand side of this particular slide that you've got the loop, okay, at the end of the chain up over the top of the fetlock joint, all right, and then you half hitch below that uh, between the hoof head and the dew claws. That spreads out the uh, pressure across that leg so that you don't do leg damage. At, at the time a calf is born, every calf has some degree of acidosis, which is really a deprivation of oxygen, which we call hypoxia, and the uh, accompanying uh, accumulation of carbon dioxide. Calves that are especially at risk for acidosis are those calves that are uh, have prolonged stage two of labor, in other words, a long delivery process, and calves that come backwards, okay? Those are the calves that are at highest risk for acidosis. You gotta make sure that those calves, you know, get oxygen, okay? And you're probably gonna have to stimulate the nose a little bit, okay? Stick straw maybe in the, uh, in the nose to, to cause a reflex so the calf gasps and gets some, get some air because we gotta get rid of that acidosis. So when do you call for assistance? Well, number one, if you don't know what the problem is or you don't know what the solution is, you need to call for assistance. If you know the problem, you know the solution, but you're unable to make progress in 30 minutes, you need to probably call for assistance. Another little technique that we sometimes use when, when we're working animals and from a safety standpoint, remember we talked about this up and down head movement in a parallel bar situation. Okay, if you've got a cleat over here on the far side of the, the chute, you can hang basically a halter that's been condensed down. All right, stick that on that loop. Animal's head is in and we want to restrain the animal from going up and down as much, all right? So what we can do is we can bring that underneath the animal's head, okay, come to this cleat, and again, create a circle eight with a twist, and now you've got the animal's head held up, all right? And for some procedures, that becomes an important feature. Another safety aspect that becomes really, really important, all right, is that you never want, when an animal is in here, you never want to put your hand inside this chute, okay, above the animal's head. Because if the animal comes up, guess what? Your arm is in there, you're either going to get a broken hand or a broken, broken arm, all right? The same thing is true whenever you're working on the side, all right? You've got to be very careful. Most of the chutes are designed today okay, the newer models, where there is a space between the head gate and the chute itself, all right? That gives you an opportunity to be able to go in and give an, uh, either a subcutaneous or an intermuscular injection in the neck, which then follows beef quality assurance guidelines. 
All of our injections, okay, are given in the neck, in front of the shoulder. There's a triangle, all right? And having, having this space between the head gate and the chute gives you access to that neck without having to be able to go in through the bars, okay, and an animal move and crush your hand or create a, uh, an injection that, that you don't want. So if, if the vaccine or, or the antibiotic says go sub-Q, we do it sub-Q. If it says that it, it's to be administered IM, then we do it IM. And there are, there are other guidelines that go beyond the scope of this video that would, could be discussed in that arena. Another important aspect of animal safety, and quite honestly, human safety as well, is that when animals come out of the chute, they need to have footing. Some of these animals are going to come out and they're going to just walk out. Some of them are going to come out at a little bit faster pace, all right? And the floor surface in front of the chute becomes critical in terms of animal safety. And so here's an example, okay, of something that could be put in front of the chute that gives the animal traction, all right, instead of a smooth concrete surface. A roughened concrete surface would work. There's different kinds of mats, okay, that could be put there. In some cases, it may be gravel, all right, that would give the animal footing, all right? But the point is, they need to have good footing as they exit the chute. When handling cattle from a safety standpoint, both from an animal and a human perspective, good equipment is important. It doesn't have to be expensive, but it needs to be good equipment, okay, that's sturdy, that's easy to, to maneuver and, and work and operate, and it needs to be quiet. All right, because animals, particularly cattle, have, can hear at different levels than we can hear as humans. And so loud noises, creaking, cracking, okay, slamming, banging, okay, can, can, can frighten animals and make them much more unpredictable in how they're going to they're gonna react to management practices. So having good facilities, all right, having a good head gate, is, is really an important feature, okay? Whether it's got a squeeze mechanism or a crush mechanism is probably less important, all right? But a good head gate, having access to a palpation cage is, is whether it's in a homemade system, okay? Or it's in a commercially available system, okay? Doesn't make any difference, but having a palpation cage where you can go in and you can work behind an animal, keep the next animal in line off of your back, all right, is really, really, really important. And then, you know, low stress animal handling uh, techniques are really a, go together with a good set of animal handling facilities. In this month's production and management tips, one of the first things that I think about is evaluating cattle for lice control. And you may need to consult with your herd health provider on which product might be most effective. If you haven't started calving yet, prepare calving pens and organize your calving equipment and supplies. Make sure that you include in that preparation an area that is dry and draft free for your newborn calves, especially when it's really cold outside and when we have mud. Some cows are gonna calve early, so close observation and timely calving assistance are important in saving calves. The next item on my list is cows in the last trimester of pregnancy have increased nutrient requirements and the requirements during early lactation are the highest within the production cycle. Feeding the best quality hay is justified and supplemental energy and or protein may be necessary to balance these diets. The next one on my list is monitoring cow body condition and making nutritional adjustments so that cows calve and then move into the breeding season with moderate body condition. The next one on my list is make sure that cows have enough vitamin A through supplementation. Realize that supplement A or vitamin A deteriorates about 10% per month in storage. So if your mineral supply was bought a year ago, Okay, even though it says vitamin A on the feed tag, that vitamin A activity is probably gone. So make sure that you get enough vitamin A into these cows 
okay, during this critical time of calving and going into the beginning of the breeding season. Check water resources frequently to make sure that animals have ready access to clean, fresh water, and especially when we got freezing temperatures that the water is thawed. The next item on my list is to think, start thinking about scheduling a breeding soundness evaluation for, you, for the upcoming breeding season. Get your name on the list, okay, and get a date scheduled. For those that are using artificial insemination, consider giving semen and estrus synchronization supplies ordered. And the last one is in the next month, consider frost seeding of legumes into your grass-based pastures. We've really only got one pro upcoming program and events that I think you might be interested in. And it's called Forage Friday Forum. Dr. Keith Johnson and extension educators specializing in forages across the state are working together to put together this program. It's gonna be a lunch hour program beginning in March, on March 5th, actually. Uh, and the URL for that is listed on this slide and it's also listed in show notes below. This presentation was a production of the Animal Science Department at Purdue University.